coming to chess, ladies and gentlemen. All right, man, I appreciate everybody very much for coming by. Uh, so I did uh, go ahead and take uh, the final game uh, between Ding Loren and Ramesh Babu Pragnananda. Uh, and so, yeah, as you guys know, they played the Chessable Masters. Uh, so, uh, you know, the it's interesting with Prague because, I mean, he was, like, going to school this whole time. So he was pretty much having to, like, split, you know, between playing chess and studying and taking exams and things like that. So, uh, you know, just imagine if he was able to fully focus on chess. Uh, it'd be something crazy. Uh, but uh, for all of my people that are coming from the Philippines, of course, um, I will say mabuhay to you. Maga na umaga. Merameng salamat po sa na nunawod for my video. I appreciate you guys very much. Uh, anybody who is coming from China, um, I will say uh, ni hao uh, and shishini. I appreciate you guys very much for stopping by. Anybody who is coming from India, I will say vana come to you. Uh, Nandri, I appreciate you guys very much for stopping by and taking a look at my video. Uh, but if you guys are ready to go, uh, let's take a look and see what we have for this game. Uh, so we do have D4. We got Knight to F6. We got C4. Well, very typical uh, stuff. Uh, we do see uh, E6. Uh, and this is kind of a branching point. You have a lot of things you can do. Uh, there's Knight to C3s inviting the Nimzo Indian. Uh, there's just simply just playing E3. Knight comes to F3. You even have some Bishop to G5s. You know, kind of however you want to play. Uh, but we do see uh, Liren uh, go Knight to C3. And uh, that is inviting the Nimzo Indian, which is what we do see in the game. Uh, so we do see Bishop to b4, uh, and then we do see e3. And like I always say, we're not worried about the capture here because the pawn is going to capture back. Uh, and then you just have a gigantic clump of pawns in the center of the board. So you're good to go. Uh, we do see castles by black. We got Bishop to d2. Uh, we see d5, uh, a3, Bishop retreats back to e7. Uh, it's not you know too beneficial to give up the Bishop. Uh, you know, for this knight here, uh, because the position does usually get pretty open. Uh, so, I mean, you're just pretty much going to be giving up the bishop for no reason. Uh, so, like I said, bishop to e7, we see knight to f3. We got b6, pawn takes d5, uh, pawn takes d5. Uh, we do see rook over to c1. Uh, and even though this is kind of a different opening, uh, you know, personally, as a Catalan player myself, uh, you know, the major difference in the position is basically G, G3 and Bishop to G2, uh, but it is played in a very similar way. Uh, so that kind of gives you guys a little bit of understanding, even though sometimes you don't play certain openings because they resemble other openings very closely. Uh, you know, it is, uh, you know, you kind of do have some ideas and at least a little bit of knowledge of how to play it. Uh, but we do see C5 uh, just trying to, you know, chip away. Uh, at what white has in the center here uh, and then we do have a uh, pawn takes c5 uh, and this does allow pawn takes c5 uh, and as you can kind of see uh, this is uh, pretty nice for black uh, just simply because you have uh, you know this uh, superior pawn center uh, in the middle uh, compared to white center uh, so something that would actually have been a, just a slight a tad better um, after we saw the move c5 uh, is to actually just develop uh, the bishop to d3. Uh, and of course, if we do see something like the pawn takes here, uh, you know, we will be taking back here. Uh, but, you know, it's a little bit better as far as development goes. Uh, and then you are going to be getting castled fairly quickly. Uh, but we do see, like I said, pawn takes, pawn takes, uh, and then we do see bishop to d3. Uh, and then we do see the novelty of the game, which is bishop to g4. And as I always say, I think it's kind of strange that this is the novelty, just simply because it just seems like such a natural developing move. Uh, you know, and it just seems like the best place to put the bishop. Uh, and, uh, you know, you're just going to be bringing the knight out uh, right after that. So, uh, but it is the novelty. So we do see h3. We see bishop back to h5, just maintaining that pin. Uh, we see the knight back to e2. Uh, and I mean, I'm not hundred percent sure what this move is supposed to do. I mean, you know, you're thinking of either putting the knight to G3 or putting the knight, uh, up to, uh, F4, uh, and attacking this, uh, this bishop. But the problem is black just has the ability to get rid of the knight. Uh, and it's going to give you kind of an ugly pawn structure. So we do see bishop taking F3, pawn taking F3. And I mean, this would actually be pretty good if you were castled queenside, because then you could just swing the rook over and then you have some really dangerous, you know, rooks. Uh, you know, coming up this uh, this file here. But, you know, since your king is stuck in the center of the board, uh, this isn't ideal for white to be having to deal with. Uh, if black does what they need to do and develops their pieces, uh, you know, fairly quickly, uh, you know, it can get pretty dangerous here for white. Uh, so the knight uh, B comes to D7. And I have to admit, I don't agree with this move um, just simply because uh, it was much better to actually put the knight on C6 uh, most of the time you put the knight on d7, uh, it's just pretty much to protect the other knight or maybe after the rook swings over, you go knight to f8. 
you know, kind of defending your, your, your king side. Uh, you know, and you try to avoid going knight to c6 if white has a really nice pawn center, like pawns here, here, and here, uh, and you're basically just going to be getting attacked once you place the knight on c6. Uh, so, uh, you know, you could have seen something like knight coming to c6, uh, and then after the bishop comes up to c3, queen going down to b6, uh, and this is just a much more aggressive way to play. Uh, you know, you might see rook f to e8 and then rook a to d8, uh, and you're just putting a crazy amount of pressure, uh, you know, on this king. Uh, and you have to think about the fact that as white, you do have your king in the center. So if you can move rooks here and here, uh, you're going to be, you know, uh, having a really great day. So like I said, knight B came to D7. Let me get that off the board. Uh, we saw bishop to C3. Uh, we see rook over to E8. We see castles by white. And this actually looks a little bit scary, but it's actually not too bad. Uh, like I said, because black is playing not the most aggressive way, uh, you know, it is giving white the ability to kind of, you know, get their king into safety uh, and, uh, you know, maneuver a little bit. Uh, so we do see knight back to f8. Uh, and we have actually reached a point in the game. Uh, before we get into what was played in the game, there is a really, really nice move that you can play in this position. Uh, so if you do uh, want to uh, pause the video and try to guess that move, go ahead and do so. Okay, cool. So there's actually a way to win a pawn in this position. It might not look like it because you're thinking, oh, wait a minute. I mean, you know, you got the knight and the queen on this piece. You know, you don't really have any other pieces other than, you know, if you move this bishop out of the way, the queen attacking. So, I mean, how am I winning a pawn? Uh, but if you notice that the rook is actually like very, very low on squares, uh, you can force black into a very defensive position. Uh, so the move um, is actually bishop to b5. Um, if you found this move, you would be recognizing that this rook, like I said, doesn't have anywhere to go. So you're forcing one of these knights to come back uh, and block. Of course, if you choose this knight, that just immediately drops the pawn. Uh, but even, uh, you know, using this knight, uh, you do have another move that you can make uh, that forces the, the pawn. So if we go down that line, uh, knight 8 will come to d7, and then you actually have the ability to go bishop to c6, uh, attacking the other rook. Uh, so you're getting like the maximum amount of, you know, oomph. You know behind this bishop uh, and after the rook moves either to b8 or to c8 uh, you will be taking the pawn on d5 knight takes queen takes uh, and you have just one pawn uh, so uh, this is a lot better for you considering you know your king side is a little bit messed up so you know having an extra pawn uh, is not a bad thing to, to, to have uh, but in the game uh, we actually saw after knight came to f8 we actually saw knight to g3 uh, and I mean, this move actually makes some logical sense, though, because you're thinking, you know, your king is a little bit exposed. Uh, so knight to g3 is kind of a way to just kind of plug up, you know, and defend your king uh, because, you know, your pawns aren't really doing the greatest job, uh, you know, kind of being out of the way. So your king is a little open. Uh, so we do see uh, knight coming down to g6. Uh, we see knight to f5 just attacking the bishop, bishop back to f8. We see bishop uh, down to b1. And... I'm not a thousand percent sure what bishop to b1 is, is exactly doing. Uh, like I said uh, before, I mean, it was much better to place it here. Uh, I mean, maybe it's possibly it's possible that Ding Loren is saying, hey, man, I want to redirect it to a2 uh, and put some pressure on this pawn. Uh, but black is not going to allow uh, white to, to get the chance to do that uh, because we do see d4. Uh, after the pawn takes d4, knight comes to d5. Uh, we do see pawn taking c5. So we're like, hey, man, let's get me some pawns rolling. Uh, we do allow the queen to come to g5 with check, though, uh, and uh, this isn't ideal. Uh, you know, like I said, your king is very, very open, uh, so, uh, you know, you're not going to be super comfortable no matter where you're at. And you have to be very careful in this position. You know, one of the really good things about this uh, particular position and the way Ding Loren is playing is Ding Loren is about to get put under, like, a crazy amount of pressure in this position, uh, and so he defends it, you know, with, like, computer-like precision. Uh, so after we see king coming up to h2, which is pretty much like one of your own moves, uh, the rook uh, a comes to d8. Uh, and I mean, you're having to worry about the discovery. Uh, the most important thing that you're thinking about is either knight to e3 or even knight to f4. Uh, and you are threatening checkmate. Uh, so you don't want your queen to, to be on this line when that does happen. Uh, so the queen does come to a4. Also thinking about possibly coming over here somewhere to like, you know, kind of protect the position. Uh, but we do see knight uh, D to F4, uh, and then we do see Rook to G1. And I mean, you know, it's pretty much in a position where you're making only moves. I mean, there isn't another move that you can really make. Uh, you know, of course, you cannot come down here to E3. 
uh, trying to protect the, the checkmate here uh, because the Rick is just going to sacrifice itself uh, and then you have nothing that's stopping the checkmate here. Uh, so Rick comes to G1. We see Queen over to H5, just constantly picking on White's weaknesses. Uh, and we do see Rook uh, to G3. But unfortunately, this does allow uh, Knight to E2. Uh, and we are forking uh, these two uh, Rooks. Uh, so, you know, Ding Loren, he finds the best way to pretty much give up uh, the exchange. Uh, and that is moving a Rook C to G1. After the uh, Knight takes on G3, uh, we do see Rook over to G3. And I mean, this is a little bit of a faster game. So, you know, for these guys to be finding these moves and putting this much pressure, this is just a testament to how strong these players are. Uh, but one of uh, the really nice things that these players are capable of doing uh, is defending uh, positions. Uh, and that's what you see them doing here. Uh, the Rook uh, comes down to E2 uh, and you pretty much only have an only move uh, because if you allow this Rook to take here, uh, you're gonna be having to back up. Uh, and, uh, you know, you're just getting <laughs> you're getting kind of demolished. Uh, so we do see Bishop up to D4. Like I said, only move. Uh, and then the Rook comes over to D2, just constantly attacking, uh, you know, all of White's pieces. We see Bishop coming down to E3 uh, and uh, we see Rook 2 to D5. And like I said, both of these players are really, really good when they are attacking uh, the other player, just basically forcing uh, the opponent to have to find the only moves. When you have 10 to 15 possible legal moves and you have to try to find that one move that saves your position, uh, that's just pretty crazy to have to do, especially with like, you know, a minute or two on your clock. Uh, it's insane. Uh, so the Rook does come up to G5, another one of the only moves. Uh, and you have to see that giving up the pawn on F3, which is what happens, uh, is not the worst thing ever. Uh, and then we do see Bishop to E4. And it just seems like all of Ding Loren's moves are like literally just in time. Uh, and if he didn't have these moves, then his position would just crumble. Uh, so the queen comes down to d1, and this is a really nice counterattack move uh, because you were, uh, you know, basically white was winning the exchange back. So this is a really great find by Prague uh, to put queen to d1. And after the queen takes on d1, we see rook taking d1. We see c6. Uh, you know, something that you should notice is these three pawns aren't really going anywhere with these two pawns kind of being in the way. Uh, but you have some real chances for these pawns to start rolling over here on the queen side. Uh, and that is something that, you know, Prague is having a really hard time trying to defend against. Uh, so we do see rook over to c8. Uh, and this is where it just starts completely going downhill. Uh, we do see bishop taking a7. And now we don't have anything preventing all three of these pawns from just simply rolling down the board. Uh, we see f5 or f6 uh, attacking the rook. Uh, we do see rook coming down to g1 because, of course, we would love a trade in this position. Uh, but Prague says, hey, man, we can't have any trades over here. But we do see b4. The knight comes down to e5. Uh, we see b5. Uh, and as you guys can see, these pawns are you know, dangerously moving forward. Uh, so we do see a G6, uh, but this isn't really an attack because that pawn is pinned to the king. Uh, we do see Bishop coming down to E3. Just, you know, getting a tempo on the knight or on the rook uh, and also getting out of, of the way of the A pawn. Uh, and for some reason, as you guys just saw, um, Prague goes king to H8. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. I mean, he unpinned his piece, but he is giving up the exchange uh, at the same time. Uh, so the bishop takes on d2. We see pawn taking g5. Uh, we see bishop to d5. Of course, threatening checkmate here. Uh, and I mean, things are pretty much equal, uh, but Ding Loren has two completely extra pawns. Uh, and as you guys knew, know before, uh, I've mentioned it, once these pawns pretty much get to the sixth rank, uh, there really isn't much that a rook can do to stop them. Uh, so, after, so we see bishop coming to d6. We see f4. Uh, I mean, the discovery wasn't all that scary, uh, but it was just kind of something that you kind of wanted to avoid. Uh, so F4, uh, you know, defends against that. So the knight comes down to D3. Uh, D3. Uh, we see B6. Uh, the knight takes on F4. Bishop takes on F4. We see bishop taking F4 with check, but this is not a problem uh, because the king just steps down to H1. Uh, and as you can see, uh, there's just really nothing that is stopping these pawns from rolling up the board. Uh, we see H5 uh, because there really isn't anything else to do. Uh, we got a4, king goes to h7, we see a5, bishop comes to d2, we see a6, we see bishop to e3, rook comes over to b1, we see rook over to d8, uh, and then we just see the move a7, 
uh, you know, <laughs> Lyran is saying, hey, man, go ahead and grab my bishop if you want. I'm going to go ahead and get a brand new queen. Uh, and I mean, this is a, a much more favorable position and you still have two entire pawns that are passed that can become queens if they want to. So uh, it is after the move a seven uh, that Prognananda does resign the game. Uh, and uh, it's pretty amazing, like I said, how Prog played this tournament uh, because he was in school as well. Uh, so, you know, it was, uh, you know, interesting for him to have to spend so much time studying and then also playing the top players in the world. And he's beaten, you know, Geary and Carlson and all of these different players. So, you know, it was, uh, you know, a really nice uh, thing to see. Uh, so, like I said, I appreciate you guys very much. Merming uh, Salamat, anybody coming from the Philippines, Nandri, anybody coming from uh, southern India, uh, and uh, Shishini uh, for anybody that is coming from China. And I will see everybody next time.